Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and normally I'd be showing you a tool review today. However, I've been sent a lot of different things that aren't necessarily tools that I'd like to talk about today. Check out what I've got on my bench. Now, as I said, these aren't necessarily tools. These are just unique automotive related items, and they are unique. They are interesting. But I think this may be the last review of this type that I'm doing because these things have been sitting around collecting dust for a little while. I've been having trouble just working them into the review schedule. So I figure if I can introduce you to these products, we won't necessarily call this a, t a review, we'll call this an introduction to what these things do. We'll just go over these line by line and I'll put links in the description. You can choose to go and check them out for yourself through those links and go further if you find something that you like. If not, well, hey. We'll just move on with our lives and do tool reviews from here on out. Anyway, uh, let's get started checking out some of these unique electronics that I've been sent. Jump starter battery packs. I've already done a review on one of these in the past, but there have been a lot, a lot of these that have shown up. These are all really similar, and I have a feeling that they're all made in the same place. I wish I could tell you where this one was from, but I can't. <laughs> I'll have to look it up and put it in the description later, but like the other review I did, it has cell phone charging capability, uh, it has this multiple USB connector. What these do is they're there if you get a dead battery. They're really handy to have. Um, I, actually, my older one, I, I, I cranked the car enough times to actually uh, burn up the fusible link and, and rendered it inoperable. Uh, so it's good to see these on here because there is quite a bit of amps that come through here. In essence, this is a super capacitor. So you charge it up like a battery, but it's smaller, it's more compact, it's good for, you know, starting a, a dead car if you need to start a dead car. So you just plug these things in and you can check out the other review for specifics because quite honestly, this looks identical, uh, virtually identical to the other one. This is the one that I've been keeping in my element, partly because it, it came with this bag, <laughs> which made it easy to just throw in the back. But it's, it's just no bones, just straight up. It also has the USB charging, um, has a different button for the light. That's part of the reason why I like it, because the other one is like the charging button that does that. Uh, on and off gives you state of charge. And the other thing is, these are like the big boy clamps as compared to these. These work. I mean, I've, I've started actually cars without batteries with, with both of these types, but these are a little more heavy duty in this version here. And it charges via USB connection. You can either plug it into the cigarette lighter and charge it with a vehicle after you've gotten it started. One square, one's round, so you can only plug it in one way. And ready to go. You can start a dead car with this. It's kind of nice. This is the... Uh, NOCO Genius Boost Jump Starter. That wraps up the jump starters. Now, since we're on automotive convenience, these guys here, the Life Tire Gauge and also the 4-in-1 Digital Tire Gauge that we have here. Both very similar products, um, except for this one is the quote-unquote Swiss Army Knife version. And uh, this one, well, has some other features. Both of them, I believe, have, uh, I know this one's got a seatbelt cutter, and both have things to break window glass. And flashlights. Aside from that, they are made to uh, check the tire pressures that you have. So why don't we use them to check some tire pressure? Let's just say country of origin of everything on this table, made in China, all of it. I've actually had something similar to this for a while. And this one, yeah, fires right up. Bar, KPA, that's kind of nice, and PSI. PSI, bar, KPA, okay, but how do I turn it off? Hold? Yes. The torch. Maybe, ah, maybe that's it. Go grab me a AAA battery. Battery. Hey, that's helpful. So the LED or the torch. LED, torch. This guy, yeah, I thought so. Spring loaded. Switchblade, window breaker. I don't know how useful these pliers will be. They don't seem like they'd be very useful, but um, you can turn the tags off of your t-shirts with this, I think. 
Let's try it out on a tire. Oh look, a tire. I'm gonna go for the LED so I can illuminate my valve stem. Ooh, and it's lit up inside there too. How convenient, like if you're trying to check your tire pressures at night. Nice. Ooh, and I want PSI. So I'm on PSI right now. 30.5. Ooh, it's so digital. 30 point, oh, and it holds the measurement. That's convenient. Oh, it tells you everything. So you can convert it in a way. Well, that's international. And then if I need to inspect my brakes. Hey, those are brand new. And it's got the strap so you can stylishly carry around your tire pressure gauge. Let's uh, check out its uh, competition, if you will. This one is from Tech. This one has a seatbelt cutter. I suppose you could use one of these as a seatbelt cutter that's in here, but uh, this one comes with a seatbelt cutter right there. You just slip it in there and get to cutting seat belts. Um, it also has a torch, but once again, no batteries. I found out that these are AAA batteries that are required here, but I, I can already see an issue. And that is trying to get this all the way down. It's kind of down inside there, so it's a little, a little fiddly. There's our light. This one just has a light that comes on. It's not flashy or anything. It just comes on. Looks like it just switches back and forth between PSI and bar in this one, though. Pull the button down. Does it turn off? Yes. Also has window breaker, which is what these are for. It's not as heavy as this guy. This guy is actually a little bit heavier. And really, all we have is uh, the tire pressure gauge here, which I will attempt to use now. Hey, look, a tire. Okay, this one's not lighted. It's also a bit more difficult to use, if I'm honest. And this one says 29.5. So this one reads a full pound difference than the other one. Oh, now it went up to 30. I've got to say that the interface, uh, switch back and forth, that's uh, two bar. Given a choice between the two, I personally would go for this one. It's got more features, it's got more stuff. Uh, it does not have a seatbelt cutter, but it does have a knife. Uh, it also only takes one battery as opposed to two. Either way, both can be used, but here's the Achilles heel with digital tire gauges. The battery runs out, it's just a hunk of plastic. <laughs> it's not gonna help you out. So if you use an analog tire gauge, it's actually gonna fit inside your glove box a little bit better, tell you the same thing and always work. Whereas, uh, well, I shouldn't say always works, tire gauges do go bad. Uh, but these do come with some additional features uh, that could be helpful to you. So I'm introducing you to these tire gauges. This apparently will via Bluetooth technology, take the uh, music out of your phone and put it into your vehicle. Yeah, instructions for use, line in and line out. So even if, even if you're not using Bluetooth, it looks like you've got a hard connection that you can connect to your phone. Where is my phone? Let me go get my phone. So this is what I'm gathering, that um, this can be in your vehicle somewhere. You can either hook it up with this RCA type connection with the line out and it's gonna be powered up, I suspect, by USB. Yeah, I think, I think it's gonna to have to have some form of USB power in order for it to work. Uh, this, I think, goes into like your vents in your dash. You attach one of these adhesive backing things to your phone that this can fit like in the vents and you can just stick it on there and your phone is there in the vents. Downside is you're blocking off your airflow out of your vents. Okay. I, I suppose you could put it somewhere else, but I, I'm imagining based on what that's shaped as, that's, that's the way it's set up. And, and this is going to be tricky here because YouTube does not like music. So I'm going to try and find some way of showing you how this works. And I guess we're also going to have to power this up via USB. And I have that capability here in the element. So we'll do that. We'll pair it up. 
And that's going to be the tricky part is pairing this via Bluetooth from here to here. Oh, well look, looks like the power is already on. Let me figure that out. I'll get it hooked up to the element and we'll jump back in to show you the result. Some things get lost in translation. I'm just going to read for you some of these instructions. I was looking at how to pair this up. The boot long press the power button for three seconds. Boot from do a boot prompt sound red and blue lights flashing. The matching connection receiver after setup automatically move into the state of Bluetooth pairing. Red and blue lights flashing. Cell phone Bluetooth device. Click on the Bluetooth search. Mobile phone find the device name. AGP Tech. Click on the matching. Long red blue lights. Do a hint sound. Bluetooth connection is successful. The machine can automatically back to the memory. Connect to the phone. After the success again, open the Bluetooth will connect automatically. Here's that magnet thing for the vents. Like I said, I think that's how it goes and you put the thing on the back of your phone and you can stick it up there. Actually, that might be a better, I've had this thing forever and it sort of holds, sort of works. You go around <laughs> big turns, it's flopping around a little bit. Uh, but let's see if we can't pair this guy up. I, I think I understood from the gist of it. Ah, look at that, it's right there. Connected, so it's actually quite easy to pair up. Now we have to find a way to uh, see its capabilities without <laughs> violating YouTube copyright laws. <laughs> which should be a challenge. By the way, my element has an auxiliary port here that I've plugged into, so I went from the out of this into the in of my auxiliary port on the element. Uh, I also have a charger here that, that's hooked up to it. I think I figured out a way to get around the whole YouTube uh, issue thing and uh, still demonstrate the Bluetooth capability. So I'm gonna have uh, cameraman Brian give me a call and we will, uh, converse via Bluetooth through the stereo of the vehicle. Ha! Hello? Hello? Oh, wait. We have to change the sound output to this guy. Okay. Hello? 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 Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, we can uh, talk via Bluetooth, and it will also work for music. I can say it works for music. I just can't do that on camera. But we were listening to music just a minute ago, and... It does work. It does work, it does work and... I've actually hooked this up permanently to the element because it's so much easier to use than what I had in here before. So I'm, I'm much happier with this setup. In fact, I've put the uh, metal piece on the back of my phone case here and stuck this up in the vent and it sticks. And actually I like it much better than this guy, which was getting kind of cumbersome. That's kind of neat and tidy. And then if I need to charge, I've got my charger here also. So uh, I just, got me a new toy to try out here. I Surprisingly, it, as easy as it was to hook up and it's really easy to now to run my music through here. Now, depending upon what type of stereo setup you have in your vehicle, uh, like my Acura Vigor, this probably wouldn't work so much other than the little cassette tape that I've got there. It would save me from plugging things into the bottom of the phone like I do now. Uh, really, that, that would be the only difference, but it would be kind of cluttered. The element just happens to have this, for lack of a better word, shelf space uh, that I can use and things are on the way and, you know, seem to work just fine here. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with that. Hi-Fi Bluetooth 4.1 receiver, AGP Tech. Next, let's talk about the head-up display. If you're a race car driver and you don't want to take your eyes off the road, <laughs> <laughs> this might be the thing for you, but you know, this might be kind of neat. I, I've driven older Nissans and things that have had head-up displays in them, and they're kind of kind of neat. A small little compact size, which is nice. Uh, and this is from Echo Man. Should be interesting. And a remote. Kind of heavy. Looks like it goes on your keychain, if you'd like it to. Here's like a little pad that you can put on your dashboard so that it stays put. It looks like you'll also need this little piece that's going to have to go on your windshield above it. Connects to your OBD2 port in your vehicle. Let's hook it up to the element because it's got an OBD2 port. I have this plugged into the OBD2 port on my element and I will turn it on, plug it all the way in. Yes, everything's backwards because it projects onto the windshield, so it's going to be backwards. So off, on, you almost don't need the piece that goes on the windshield. 
Yeah, there we go. I didn't like the way it was hooked up. I didn't like the way it went into the OBD2 connector. It's not that quick. <laughs> No wonder. Okay, so you would have to turn it off every time uh, unless it turns off by itself. And it doesn't come up with a bulb check whenever you first start it up. Yeah, this, this connection to the OBD2 port is tenuous at best. Yeah, it comes up with a connection error. Seems almost every time. Honestly, not as happy with this one. Oh, finally. There it is again. <laughs> I, you know, with his, this one doesn't seem as easy to use as the other one was. I don't see any temperature readings or anything that have come up. I think it's just idiot lights. Once again, it's... <laughs> it's honestly not very accurate and the connection is sort of wonky. And you have to run this wire probably up under the dash, up under behind to get to your OBD2 connector. Uh, so that it plugs in. Does it work? Yes. You know, it would probably work even better if I put that little piece of uh, reflective material up on the windshield. Not for me though. I don't really, I'm not feeling this one. Head up display. If you're into this sort of thing, great. It doesn't really do much for me. It doesn't seem to be very fast as far as its ability to keep up with like just raising the throttle. I can't take it out and drive it. There's a Jeep with a blown engine behind the element so it's it would be difficult to go outside and drive it and see what it's like. Uh, but I've seen enough. I know that I had to fiddle with this connection way too much for me to care and that I would eventually have to. And you know, it might have something to do with how this was packaged. This wire looks a little bit pinched. That being said, I, this doesn't really do it for me. And I'm not saying it wouldn't do it for you. Hey, go for it. But for me, meh, meh. So I'll probably give this away at the meetup or something. And now the dash cams. As you can see, I've been sent more of these than anything, and there are a variety here. This one has front and rear. This one, I believe, is just front, and this one, I believe, is also just front, and also varying degrees of res resolution. Uh, some of these are way up there. This one, uh, 1080p by 720. This one uh, can be to uh, 2560 by 1080 at 30 frames a second, or 1920 by 1080. I guess it depends on what you're uh, recording. Uh, G sensors for accidents, all that type of thing. These things, uh, these things I'm told are really popular in Europe in places where, well, let's just say that there are corrupt officials and insurance agents and all that kind of thing. If you don't have video proof of what happened, you don't have proof at all. In other words, you have nothing. Uh, this one, also a resolution of uh, 2304 by 1296. These different resolutions, I'm guessing, there's, there's only so much memory that this thing has. Uh, so the, the less of resolution that you go for, the more you'll be able to store. The more resolution you go for, the less you'll be able to store uh, is, is kind of what I'm, what I'm seeing. I say we plug them in, try them out, see what, see what we can see, see what we can figure out as far as playback. I say we start with the most complicated of the bunch. Uh, this one actually takes the place of your rear view mirror like all together. So you replace your rear view mirror and it's, it uses the second camera and it'll strap onto your mirror there, but it uses the second camera uh, for your reverse. So you can mount this someplace to where it can look out your back window and uh, you can, I bet, see it through that. I've briefly hooked things up. This is the rear camera that comes with quite a bit of cord and then there's an extension in the back here gets powered off of your um, auxiliary power inside the vehicle. This goes over on the uh, rear view mirror, but here is where it plugs in for the USB. This is the rear camera and the AV. It looks like you can also plug in a GPS to it, so you can use that. And there's a HDMI connection. 
I believe this will record to a micro SD card, which is right there. You can put one in. It did not come with a micro SD card. That may be something you need to include. I don't know if I'm going to check real quick to see if it has some kind of internal memory. But here's the front camera here. So that will uh, look out the front for you. And the back one looks out the rear. Uh, but let's plug it in and see what we can see. Look, the wire's hitting the ceiling already. Well, I can say it's not necessarily easy to uh, get these little rubber things to go in anywhere. This wire should actually come down or something because if your rear view is close to the headliner like mine is, it's smack there in place. <laughs> hey, look at that. Uh, it's already telling me I don't have a, an SD card, but there is uh, the front of the shop and here is the rear camera. Turn myself right side up. Hey, and the battery lights up. This is neat. The menu and the buttons, all you got to do is pull this thing over and they come shooting down. So mode, now you can, I guess it's playback. Ah, it's backing up. So re this records audio also. Huh, I wonder, like if, it's not going to detect whether or not you're in reverse, but I, I guess in a way you're always, always, you're, you're seeing what it sees and you can angle the camera around in the back of the mirror here. Interesting though, so if I wanted to see what was behind me, I could just do that. And I could have that set up to where it's just looking out the back all the time. Or the front, if I just wanted to see that. I wonder if I could just get rid of it all together. Well, and there you have it. Once again, not quite my thing, but interesting. I, I like that it's a rear view mirror. I like that I can view what I've seen or, or actually use it as a backup camera. I mean, that that's really neat that I can just clip that and use it as a, if I position this just right, I could, like if I had a trailer hitch or something, I could back right up with it. And also uh, records in the event that you're ever in a collision, uh, it will record stuff for you. And this is set up to record front or back or, or whatever, whatever you need. We got two more. Once again, my biggest critique with this one is I did not like how that wire stuck up and hit the headliner. That makes it darned inconvenient. If it had like a 90 degree angle or something for uh, vehicles that have review mirrors that are close to the headliner, that would be helpful. Uh, but otherwise, kind of a nifty little unit. I just also wish it came with an SD card, but I mean, those aren't very difficult to find or pick up. So, uh, but there was a specific type that you needed that's listed in the instruction manual. You got to have a, an SD card that's going to be fast enough to take the kind of video data that's going to be going into this. And obviously the bigger the card you have, the more uh, you'll be able to record. But as I said, we got two more. I'm going from biggest to smallest. <laughs> so I'm going for this guy next. Now that, this one compact little unit. It's cute. It's got a little screen on the back. Uh, similar setup. Power on and off. Uh, also, it looks like it has a HDMI output, USB, and all the usual stuff. Looks like you can have the USB and everything permanently mounted, and you don't want to leave this in the vehicle and somebody to walk by and take it from you. You just slide it on there, and it will power up through that, which you can just actually probably just stick up to the headliner like this off the windshield and you could have that actually just behind the rear view mirror someplace close to it oh, GPS That's what this one has with it doesn't say anything about that but I find it interesting that I've got some form of GPS in here here's the card slot in this one also micro SD other connection USB HDMI here's like I say you can permanently mount that. This one here goes to that GPS. Also has a, a microphone for sound. Let's power it up. Oh, 
also that same car. <laughs> nice. And it's telling me I don't have a, an SD card. I'm not going through the trouble to, to mount these and route wires or any of that stuff. I'm just uh, doing this for demonstration purposes. Okay, so video re resolution, uh, time lapse, that would be fun. Language settings, card volume. So there's like a wide, full screen, and then uh, that, the one where it comes up no card, I'm assuming is like playback. Oh, you know what that might be? I'll have to check the instructions, but this yellow button, the GPS, this might be like a help signal, like sort of like OnStar does if you get into trouble or something. You can push that button and it sends out a signal and says, hey, come help. But I do like that you can disconnect this from the vehicle relatively easily and just leave this piece in place. Uh, that way you can remove it. Uh, the other one that I just did, that's a permanent mount. It's going to be in there. Uh, but this guy, and also you can swivel. I noticed that you can swivel this mount 90 degrees if you like. So that's nice. But yeah, just a straight up dash cam with this one. And in, as far as the record time, it's really going to depend on the size of card that you have and what settings that you you set it up as. This camera is also from Advanced Portable. This review mirror camera was Advanced Portable. So is this one. Smaller, lighter, cheaper, uh, just less stuff to deal with. And, and I, like, I like that you can take this out. I recently had my vehicle broken into. Uh, it's nice to know that I can take stuff like this. Since I don't even keep my garage door opener inside of my car anymore. We got one more. Last guy here, the Vantru dash cam. Smallest one yet. Ooh, nice. Also suction cup mount. This one's a little bit different though. Slides into the slot, slides over, and there you go. Got a nice lock. Neat. For suction. Lock for suction. Same deal. USB powered via the accessory socket. I know. Eric the car guy is just opening up boxes, not even looking at instructions, just plugging it in saying, hey, there's a picture. Yeah, that's about it. Once again, links in the description. Ah, I like this better already. They, well, to some extent, because <laughs> having the wire down below like this means that it's sort of in the way, because with all these things, all the routing of your wiring and all that, you're going to have to put someplace. Let's plug it in. I know. I'm just plugging them in, doing it again. Whatever. This one also had GPS capability. Uh, it's got a plug-in up here at the top. So I guess with the GPS, you, you plug in the GPS. The other one came with a GPS unit. This one came with, well, pretty much everything you see here. This cord is better. It's not as stiff as the other ones. It seems like you'd be able to route it around a little bit better. But, you know, with these windshield mounts, you can put this practically anywhere. Set it up to... Just live quite happily on my windshield up in an area that's out of the way or whatever. I'd probably put it over on the driver's side. Looks like we've got HDMI in the card slot here in the bottom. There's a light that comes on. Oh, there's the lights. I don't think those are infrared. I think those are straight up LEDs. Video resolution, loop recording, motion detection, parking monitor. Wow, so I guess you could leave it in here and you could watch your car while it's parked. Uh, delete files language setup, default settings, formatting, card volume, no card inserted, yes I'm aware, playback, event video, normal video, I believe this also has a, a microphone, what's this button do? Uh, so the camera is no SD card in here at all. Doesn't look like you can change the view on this like I was on the other ones, loop recording, motion detection. This one doesn't have as many selections, but it's also in some ways easier to use. Yeah, disconnect power from the vehicle, it goes off. So I'm not sure how that parking thing works. Less functionality, uh, but smaller, compact, seems like it has better construction. Uh, it's simpler to use because it is smaller. Suction cup, mount and easy i think this is easier to take on and off than the other one was because this one just slides into a slot you just take this slide into the slot you're done then to take it off you do the same thing it's a pretty straightforward dash cam 
but no settings for like a wide angle view or a regular view at least not that i could find well, there we go that's our stuff there we have it the electronics special now i don't plan on doing a lot of videos of this type or a lot of reviews of this type i'd rather stick to tools and things but this was fun uh, i learned quite a few things uh, it, as far as the stuff that i use i definitely use these these portable jump uh, boxes, if you will. In fact, this one already lives inside my element. I have one of these in the back of my Vigor as it is now, and I'll probably put this in the back of my new van just to have it because any vehicle can have a dead battery. And these are just darn handy to have if that should happen. Hopefully it's charged up. The head up display, cool, cool idea. Not really my thing. And honestly, I had some trouble with the connection on this. Uh, eh, that's kind of how I feel about the head up display. However, I did. This is in the element now, this Bluetooth uh, receiver. Easy to set up and surprisingly, I really like this. And I don't know if I showed on camera or not, but you can actually advance songs uh, just on the outside of that, play and pause right on the unit itself. So you can actually use this as a, as a Bluetooth interface and not have to go directly to your phone or mobile device, whatever you're using. The digital tire gauges, you know, okay, uh, to me, fine, whatever. I, I've used regular tire gauges for years. As I said, if the batteries and ease go dead, you don't have a tire gauge anymore. Uh, but all the other little goodies that come with them. I, if you're in an accident and you can't open the doors, having the ability to break the windows, that's a really nice thing to have. So it's, it's, these are not useless, but if they're for you, they're for you. For me, meh, I can kind of go either way, but if I were to choose one, I kind of like the one with the Swiss Army knife function and the lighted tip on the end of it. Now the dash cams. If you really want to cover your butt, literally, I'd go for the one with the rear and the front camera, because uh, that way you're recording both. Uh, however, the, the way the uh, attachments and the wiring come into the top of this, if it's too close to the headliner, as I said, it's going to be hard to get that rear view uh, connection uh, into there. So you just, you kind of have to take that into consideration. These other dash cams here, this one seemed to have a, a few more features to it, also had that GPS with it. This one didn't have the GPS, you couldn't change fields of view, but you know, it seemed like it was of maybe a little bit better construction. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't do complete reviews on these, but as I said, this is not really my forte. I'm, I'm into tools. Uh, it's taken me forever to get to these. I've had these, in fact, for quite a few months and was looking for an opportunity to do this and it just seemed to make sense to to cover them all at once as an overview video so this isn't technically a review video it's an overview an introduction if you will and that introduction will continue in the description with links to everything i talked about here hope you enjoyed it anyway if you have automotive questions head over to ericthecarguy.com Welcome video there to tell you about our features to help you. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram. If you wish to connect with me socially, I close each of my videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I guess play with your electronics. I'll see you next time.